Hello everyone and welcome back to Switch Up. Now today we have for you another one of our buy and avoid lists based on some of the games that have come out recently. One slight amendment to the formula. We were finding it quite difficult with some games as it was quite cut and dry buy or avoid. So we've added an in between if you like of wait for a sale. So it will be buy, avoid or wait for a sale. Exactly that. It just seemed a little bit more fair. Much like Demolition Crew, this next one is called Life of Pixel and is very much up your street, isn't it, Glenn? Yeah, this reminded me very much of a game called Thomas Was Alone that I played on the PlayStation Vita, with the basic premise being that you had to get to the end of the level and there were certain collectibles that tried to entice you to go off the beaten path and risk death at the same time. What makes this quite interesting, though, is that the levels go through the evolution of gaming in terms of the aesthetic. So you'll start with levels that look like Spectrum games and you'll move through the stages going from 8-bit to 16-bit etc etc. What I liked about it was that it has an online leaderboard just like an arcade and I actually spent most of my time trying to beat the world record on the very first level. We both recommend this as a buy if you're into this genre. The next game on our list is called Slay the Spire and you probably know it by now. It's a very popular game. Our good friend the Flannel Fox has an excellent review of this one up. I'm going to quote him and he said it was one of his favourite games of 2019 so far. It does have a few bugs by all accounts and a couple of glitchy issues but it still comes highly recommended. With that kind of recommendation and I fully trust the Flannel Fox's opinion on games, I would say this is a buy. Next game then, and this is another buyer, and this is Guilty Gear. Now this is a re-release of the very first game in the series, released to celebrate its 20th anniversary. Now I've been playing this all night, and this game has held up fantastically well. At £15.99, or $9.99, which let's be honest is a bit of a pee take, the game is very reasonably priced in the US, not so much over here in the UK. One caveat I would say is that you can get some very, very good fighters from the Neo Geo in terms of the hamster releases, such as Samurai Showdown, The Last Blade and King of Fighters for cheaper than this, so perhaps that's something to consider, but if you do like Guilty Gear or fighting games in general, this is a great one and I would recommend a buy. Brilliant, and I'd just really like to tell everyone how good I was at it. Unfortunately I can't because I was terrible at it. Cheers, Glenn. Okay, the next game is Among the Sleep. Now, this is a psychological horror game where you take on the role of a toddler. A very interesting concept indeed. The visuals aren't great, they're very dated, but I like the idea and it works really well. At certain times, you'll have to clutch your teddy tightly and it glows to give you a bit of light in the darkness and the general gurgling of yourself as you experience horrific events is quite chilling, to be honest. I came across a washing machine that was making one of the most okay. disgraceful noises I've ever heard and unfortunately the game suddenly and spontaneously switched itself off. But it is fun, it's just a little expensive. So we'd say maybe pick it up on sale. I think something's coming. next game we're going to mention then is a game called Golem or Golem's Gates. Now this is quite an interesting mix of genres. It has a card battling mechanic, is an RTS of sorts, but also has some elements of tower defense in there as well. The idea was that one of your characters was your base, if you like, and if they were defeated, you lost the round, so you had to keep them safe. You could develop more units to move forward onto the map and obviously try to take the other character's base or defeat their character, but the way that you attacked was 
by using your cards and, and obviously the cards all had different effects it's actually quite an interesting game quite in depth and took a little while to get used to but once you were into it it was actually very enjoyable having said all that the price was on the relatively high side personally i would recommend waiting for a sale on this one but if what i've said in the mix of genres sounds interesting to you you might want to jump in straight away Okay, the next game is Cricket 19, and it's the official cricket game of the Ashes, I believe. The developers actually took us on a nice little tour of Lords for this one. It's the first cricket game on Switch, and it's a bit of a return to form if you're a fan of cricket games. Unfortunately, in its current state, it has a few bugs. We experienced a couple of times where assets on screen disappeared entirely, and then would pop back up. So I've been waiting for a patch to come before I give my full opinion but it ran well and was easy to pick up and play for people that don't even like cricket such as myself with all of the official England and Australian teams present and a very accurate recreation of the Lord's Cricket Ground. Yeah, just one interesting thing about this game, the physical version, if you can call it that, is a download code in a box. So it's just something to be aware of if you are looking to buy it physically, it doesn't actually come with a cartridge. Mark's played a lot more of this one than I have, and I think I would be fair to say, Mark, that you would say wait for a sale and possibly wait for a patch as well. Yeah. The next game is one called Selma and the Wisp. Quite a cheap little game, but unfortunately I don't really like the concept. You control a glowing wisp who guides the young girl through the levels. The problem here is that everything's physics based and it's very easy to get stuck in the environment. So there'll be a chain hanging down and you'll guide the wisp past, but the girl will kind of get stuck. You'll have to climb up a surface, you'll move the wisp over the top, but she won't follow every time. And on the tutorial stage, I even managed to die when I don't think you were supposed to be able to die. It was a little bit upsetting. Yeah, I've not played this one, but it sounds very much just from what you've said that it suffers from escort missionitis, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, I'd say it's an avoid. The next one is Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons, and as I mentioned in our upcoming games list last week, it's a very good title. I think this is around £8 on the Switch, and it looks like they've done a fantastic job on the port here. The visuals, although they looked good before, look very crisp indeed on the Switch. The gameplay is interesting, you control both of the characters, but they've also included a co-op mode. I can't think of a negative thing to say about this, it has a lovely story, the aesthetic's nice, and it's not overly long. It's a nice game, I'd recommend buying this one. The next game is a game called Per Chang, and for me, is a definite buy. It's physics-based where you need to get a certain amount of marbles into a jar using a variety of levers, pulleys, and fans. And it's one of those games where you want to have one more go, whether you win or whether you lose. It reminds me quite a lot of a game that was on the 3DS called Art of Balance. Maybe not so much in its mechanics, but in terms of its addictive qualities. Yeah, everything's done right, runs at 60 frames per second, the aesthetic's nice and smooth, clean, and just works.
The final one on our list is a game called Warlocks, and it's from our friends over at Cubic Games. Now, no surprise here, it's launching at 50% off at £7.99. Now, we gave this as the free game for the subscriber Som67, and I had a little email pop up, and he'd written a nice little description of it and what he likes about it, and he really enjoyed this one. He simply writes that Warlocks 2 Godslayer is an action RPG side scroller. It has excellent pixel graphics, cheesy humor, and fluid controls. And really, he doesn't find anything not to love with this one. He would give it overall if he was going to give it a review score, about an 8 out of 10, and says at this price, it is a definite buy. I'm going to go with him. I've had a little go on it today, and I've really enjoyed what I've played so far. I'm really impressed with the way that Cubic Games seems to be getting better and better as they go on. They are Warlocks Godslayers. Thanks so much for watching the video guys and to Psalm67 for his little addition and to our Patreons who support the channel every single month. Yeah, please do let us know if any of these interest you. Will you be buying or avoiding any of these? Are there any games that came out recently that we've missed that you would recommend? Stick it down below in the comments. And until next time, happy gaming. For all things Switch all the time, keep it Switch up. See ya! Stars, we can sleep under the stars, under the stars.